if you're going outdoors and you're shooting portraits and maybe it's planned or semi-planned, always have your head on a swivel. Like we're walking to our second destination and I look at this green reflection coming off the windows and I know this is gonna make for an interesting shot. Even using that color, maybe for a tight portrait or just using the light if I shoot it in black and white, using it for some interesting dimension and contrast when we go up and close. So we're gonna go over there, try and shoot it and see how it turns out. As temperatures and vaccination rates hit new records, the attraction of enjoying photography outdoors has never been greater. How's that for an opening line? That being said, with this newfound freedom, it might throw some of us off a little bit. So whether it's your first time or after a sabbatical you never asked for, we're gonna walk through three simple tips to ensure you can create banger portraits when you're working outdoors. almost goes without saying, in photography, lighting is everything. Depending on your fluency, this can be the easiest variable to manage or the most difficult. Wherever you are on that spectrum, there's one thing we can all appreciate. The sun will rise tomorrow. All this sort of poetics aside, changing your subject's alignment to the sun and what layers that light may have to go through will impact your final image. And as you go through that process to find the recipe you like, I would encourage you to always include this technique and that's backlighting. If there's one thing that'll really benefit the feedback loop of photography, it's manipulating light to your creative vision. Backlighting is a simple strategy that you can employ to use the solar system's greatest light source to create imagery with character. Creators will throw around the word cinematic often and it may mean slightly different things to different people. With respect to photography, I feel that images really showcasing the shadow side of a subject embody that cinematic feeling. Backlighting involves you placing the primary light source predominantly behind your subject and then building your composition from there. What this does is create a new mood and feeling that feels a bit more human and less posed. This is also where layering things in between the foreground and midground can be valuable because you have more than one item in the frame for the light source to interact with. Try this out next time you're outdoors. Put the light source behind your subject, look for something interesting and some interesting ways to layer the composition position and see what you can create. Even the most mundane environments, you can create some compelling images when you employ a little bit of backlighting. I swear there's not a microphone connecting straight into my brain like Neo in the Matrix. That's not happening, no. Composition is something that few will ever master, but like my newfound interest in golf, that isn't the point. It's all about the journey. Continuously working on composition is something that should be part of the photography process. And it's something that keeps the entire journey exciting. So how do we approach composition in a more intentional way? In any meaningful scenario, push yourself to stagger three different perspectives on one subject. Whether you follow the traditional composition rules or not, that's up to you. The key thing I'd like you to take away is pick three viewpoints that you can show. The very simple approach is wide, medium, tight. You play with three different distances and make each one unique from the previous one. And look, this is not about shooting for the sake of shooting. I mean, really consider the composition at these three vantage points. Are you following the rule of thirds or breaking it? Experiment and see what you can pull, but at each meaningful stop, capture three varied perspectives and make this a part of the process. Even if you've been doing it for some time, this practice can challenge you and give you the occasional light bulb moment that changes everything. Whether it's varying your distance to the subject or something else entirely, look to stagger your composition and introduce variety. Your future self, the one that's editing behind the desk, will really appreciate this effort. In an alternate reality where time is at my beck and call and mind to wield, we'd have a lot more tips for this video, but we're just gonna focus on three. So what is that last thing? If there can only be three things for you to consider that you should keep in mind for capturing images outdoors, it's all about time. 
When you decide to go out and capture can make all the difference. The time you choose to go out and shoot puts you in a box on what you can create. And of course, you can make a box bigger by staying out later, but again, time. Start with the image you want to create. Maybe it's not a fully planned out shoot, maybe it's just a theme, but from that work backwards to think about what sort of timing will lead to the highest likelihood of success for you. This is not just about where the sun is going to be, though that may be the largest contributor, but also about your process. When is your environment at its best? When is it less likely to have distractions in your environment? When will your crew be at your best? When will the gear be available? Look, I can't give you all the answers, but I can give you plenty of questions and that's where it really comes down to. Thinking critically about what you want to create and going back in the day to think how close can you get to this beautiful vision as possible. And let me just take a minute to say that I don't think this should be confused by overanalyzing a situation that you're asking so many questions, you're talking yourself out of shooting. No, that's not what it's about. It's about tactical questions to set you up for success and not talk yourself out of taking pictures. When do interesting reflections appear? When do the shadows favor your type of image? When does the atmosphere of your environment best represent your art? Really being considerate about everything, about the timing of your image can make all the difference and help you approach image creation in a more meaningful way. It was the famed Vince Lombardi that said, perfect practice makes perfect. Everything I mentioned here is about creating a routine around photography outdoors so that you can work toward improving and not just going out and repeating a process that may include some bad habits. There's a ton of other items I could have talked about, but what's special about these three items, backlighting, staggered composition, timing, is that it doesn't matter what camera you have, how expensive your lens is, or where in the world you call your backyard. With these three tactics, you're bound to create images you'll appreciate and grow from. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed these tips. Be sure to let me know, is there any other tips that you use to create amazing portraits outdoors? As always, my name's Gadgen. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.